what is will be the eventuality of airtel money and once this deal is concluded well i also want to make clear that um the mobile money platforms are not part of this transaction for a very obvious reason. A platform, you know, the, uh, I, I mentioned four areas in which we would have synergies, right? I mentioned base stations, you know. Airtel has 1,600 base stations that roughly we have about 1,600. We combine them, right? Um, we'll probably come up with some number, 2,400, 2,500, whatever number of base stations that we will be able to run. Uh, jointly and at low operating cost because we don't have to run the 3200 base stations and same same thing with subscriber base distribution presence but platforms don't work that way mobile money platforms either one or the other you cannot find synergies in them so they're not part of this transaction so telecom Kenya will remain with its uh, uh, Tcash platform and uh, the joint venture company will continue actually with uh, Airtel money uh, platform and hopefully that will be also stronger. Uh, it will be strengthened by the larger uh, network uh, behind it. But for Tcash platform, which will remain behind in Telecom Kenya, and we will come up with whatever other plans uh, that Telecom Kenya may have for that particular platform. I see. Yeah. And it looks to me, and well, it sounds to me when I listen to I mean, the structuring of the whole uh, transaction, that like we are careful to attain a delicate balance where we don't create um, an oligopoly where we have small dominant players and we still you know, and maintain telecom running on the side. We have seen instances where we have had mergers, then demergers later on. Do you see this as a risk considering that sort of delicate balance you're trying to navigate? Look, I'll be very honest with you that um, everything we do has some risk, right? And we're not doing this because of choice, actually. Uh, I think both of us will acknowledge readily that the way this market has been going it's a dysfunctional market. It's a failed market. And the two, number two and number three players, you know, it's actually almost uh, farcical to refer to them as number two and number three, given how distant they are <laughs> from the number one player, yes. right? I mean, you talk about a subscriber base, the number one player is nearly at 70% of subscribers. You talk about revenues, the number one player is at 90% of revenues. You talk, about, you talk about profits, the number one player is at 105% right of profits of the industry it is a it, it is a market structure that exists nowhere else in the world but this country and so the number two and number three quote unquote because a very small puny number twos and number threes are coming together because we feel that coming together we we stand a better chance of being able to credibly offer choice and services to the consumer but it is not sufficient it is not enough a lot more has to be done to uh, address the market structure we have today. Because it, it's not sustainable that um, uh, one player continues to have 105% of profits. You see, that means that we are making all the negative profits and therefore we are diminishing uh, year on year. And there's only so much time we can continue that way. So, but I think that this now presents an opportunity. Uh, this whole transaction presents an opportunity, not just for us, as the players, but for everybody, policymakers, regulators, to take a look, to take stock, take a look at the, the telco sector, the telco market, and see if anything needs to be done. I'm aware that the regulators have been looking at this. Uh, they are cognizant of what I'm saying. I mean, this is, not, this is not news to anybody. They are cognizant, and I know that judiciously, they are looking at the situation, and they will come to their own conclusions, I hope very soon, uh, in terms of addressing uh, and ensuring a level playing field in which Ultimately, the consumer, the Kenyan consumer, is afforded choice and innovative, uh, innovative services going forward, especially with the advancement of technology. technology. Okay. And speaking about the way forward in terms of this sort of, uh, like we call it, market distortion that we have around here, there has been a proposal in Parliament to decouple the mobile money mm -hmm. business from the other telco business. I'm just keen to know what you think about this. <laughs> I think that uh, notion has uh, been doing the rounds uh, for a while. And uh, look, at the end of the day, whether you decouple or don't decouple, right? Uh, I don't think we've ever advocated that uh, as, 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 as telecom. I mean, our, we, 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 we are not interested in any dismem dismemberment of, of any competitor. 
right? And, and especially we're not interested in punishing the success of any particular competitor. All we're saying is global competition or competitive standards should be applied to this market. There's a reason the world over, right? I mean, there's nothing, we're, we're not reinventing the wheel here as a country. Yeah? Uh, we're not the only telco sector in the world. Um, there's a reason why the world over, the notion of ensuring an environment that is competitive, that allows players to be able to compete, that avoids monopolies or dominant players, um, there's a reason why that environment has been applied everywhere, to ensure that you don't have dominance or monopolies, you have a competition to benefit the consumer. And all we're saying is this should be applied here as well. Because at the end of the day, who suffers is, is, is the consumer, you know, from services that are not the best that could, that, that could be afforded to them. Okay. Mm. And Mr. Mubo, uh, we are aware of you know, the restructuring ongoing at Telcom, and we have I've also had the opportunity to look at Airtel numbers. And uh, part of the concern I would have is that uh, even if a company has significant cash burn rate, if I could call it, uh, there must be a point where you have an inflection, and we are hoping that the new entity will be profitable. What do you see as the outlook? That, that, is, that is exactly the idea. The very reason for this transaction, you know, earlier on you said there's a, you know, you said there's a point of inflection. It depends. If your cash burn rate, right, is such that no matter what you do on the top line, right, the cash burn will wipe you out before the top line catches up, which is where we are uh, as telecom. Then you have to look for other ways of resolving the issue. Um, we are very confident, and I don't want to speak for the combined entity yet, because I'm still the CEO of Telcom Kenya, and today I speak as Telcom Kenya, but obviously we have an interest. Uh, in the combined entity, and we shall be a player uh, in the combined entity. My hope, and I think from what I've seen, uh, is that profitability of that business will occur in short order. Primarily because of the growth that we are seeing already and the synergies that I've spoken of, right, that will lower the operational costs uh, of the combined entity, right? And that's, that's the idea. But even more, that the telecom Kenya remaining behind, smaller though it will be, will also, in short order, in a couple of years, be a profitable entity, okay? And, 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 and have a balance sheet that is not as negative as it is today. So there's a reason why this transaction um, affords opportunities that uh, would otherwise not be able, uh, afford, not be available to Telecom Kenya. 